The deadline to get federal assistance for flood victims is coming up. I'm working for you to show you all the ways you can apply for help. The plan from city leaders to fix our streets hits a huge bump in the road when it comes to funding. We'll explain. Plus, the new high-tech crosswalk in East County designed with you in mind. We'll tell you why Perry Elementary just won a really big award. <laughs> From performing on a curb during COVID to Carnegie Hall, Eva Mather is hitting the high note at 11 years old. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. If you were impacted by the January floods, the deadline to get federal help is looming. Good evening, I'm Jesse Pagan. Marcella is off tonight. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. Flood victims have until April 19th to apply for FEMA assistance. CBS 8's Shannon Handy is working for you on how the process works. She joins us live from the Mountain View Community Center. That's one of the places you can go to to get help. Shannon. Yeah, Carlo and Jesse, FEMA will be here at the Mountain View Community Center through that April 19th deadline. The hours are Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. until 7 p.m. So if you're having trouble with the application process online, you can actually come here and have a FEMA person guide you through that process. And this is crucial because you could qualify for tens of thousands of dollars. It's been very heartbreaking and traumatizing. It's been nearly two and a half months since water rushed into Jamesina Hart's home. She hasn't been back since, instead jumping from hotels to friends' houses. I met her this afternoon outside the Mountain View Community Center, where FEMA has set up a disaster recovery hub to help people like her apply for federal assistance. What is it that you need to get back on your feet? Um, right now, what we really need is um, a liable place to go, you know, instead of going to house to house. FEMA is offering face-to-face -face assistance both here and at the Spring Valley Library now through April 19th, a deadline to apply for aid. The process can be overwhelming, but well worth it. FEMA is offering grants to both renters and homeowners who are either not insured or underinsured. They can range from 18 months of rent to a maximum $42,500 each for home repairs and personal property loss. You can move through those frustrations of applying and FEMA then is always here to help through that process. There are several ways to apply for help. You can use the FEMA app, call their 1-800 number, or go to disasterassistance.gov. Online, there are step-by-step -step instructions to follow, including entering your zip code and the damage you suffered. You'll then be prompted to create an account. It's important to have your social security number and bank information available, and make sure you fill out everything as completely and accurately as you can, including the best phone number to reach you. Something we see again and again is uh, the application getting stuck because FEMA can't get the home inspection done. It's because the inspector can't get in touch with the applicant. FEMA says it's important to know in times of recovery, answer on no numbers because it could be FEMA on the other end. And if you're wondering where your case stands, you can always check the status online once you apply. Are you hopeful now that you have applied? Yes, I'm very hopeful that I apply. Hopefully that since I did apply, that um, we can get the ball rolling, that we can get all the things that I need. And Jamesina told me from start to finish, it took about 40 minutes to fill out that application here. Again, you can do this online, but if you need help, you can come here in person. Also, another important tip, if anything on your application changes, like your phone number or you realize there's more damage than you originally put, make sure you update that application. As FEMA puts it, keep in touch. We have all this information on our website. Just go to CBS8.com. Carlo and Jesse. Uh, Shannon, a very meticulous process to follow for renters and homeowners. But what about businesses? Is there federal assistance for business owners? There is federal assistance. They have a federal assistance loan program and the information for that. I also put that up on our website, CBS8.com, but you can also come here and get that information. And, you know, Jesse, I think this is so important because we were here today. We've been here throughout the day and there's not many people who have come by. Jamesina tells me she fears that a lot of people in this neighborhood don't know about this deadline that's looming in just about a week and a half. Absolutely, Shannon. As you just profiled, a lot of in-person help. Sometimes that may be the obstacle. You don't know how to use the app or don't have all the information. 
find a way to get there in person and they can help solve all the problems for you as Shannon just showed us. Shannon, thank you. Here at CBSA, of course, we want to help solve problems affecting you. If there's something you'd like us to look into, email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. All lanes of westbound 52 in Santee are reopened tonight now that crews have stopped the spread of a brush fire there. It burned about a half acre near Mast Boulevard. A couple of westbound lanes of the 52 were closed while ground crews worked to put the fire out. Crews fought the fire from the air as well, but we're told power lines complicated those efforts. We still don't know at this point what caused the fire. The man accused of grabbing an eight year old boy in front of his family's deli in Ocean Beach faces up to two years in prison now. Christopher Higginbottom pleaded guilty to felony false imprisonment at a hearing today. Prosecutors say surveillance cameras caught the moment Higginbottom grabbed the boy last month. The boy's father says his son is traumatized. Higginbottom will be sentenced in May. A state audit has found California spent $24 billion to fight homelessness in the last five years, but did not consistently track if the money was actually helping. According to the state auditor's report released today, the problem has not improved in many cities despite the money. The auditor reviewed homelessness spending in San Diego and San Jose and found both cities failed to effectively track revenue and spending because of a lack of spending plans. The report found the California Interagency Council on Homelessness stopped tracking data related to five initiatives in 2021. An estimated 171,000 people are homeless in California. That's roughly 30% of all people experiencing homelessness in the U.S. San Diego County supervisors voted unanimously today in favor of taking a closer look at a plan to build affordable housing at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. CBS 8's Kelly Hesedal was at the county administration building for today's vote and has more on what happens next. That's right, and today's vote by the supervisors was more symbolic than anything else, though it's possible with the supervisors' support, this project could move forward faster. Now, we heard from a number of speakers today, including uh, the deputy mayor of Del Mar, as well as a San Diego mother. Take a listen. While we will be working with fairgrounds to determine whether these units will be for families or seniors, I kind of envision it myself as for families. I think of the kids who are going to be living here. Um, what we do know is that we will be working hard to make this housing happen. My kids were born and raised here in San Diego. It was doable, it seemed, a while ago. I have a son that's 17. You know, people make these comments about, well, they should just move somewhere else. That takes money, too. This is their home. They should be able to not worry about affording or living with their parents. And the supervisor's uh, vote was unanimous, four to zero with the chair absent. Now that last woman you heard from, Natalie Rashke, with the nonprofit Lived Experiences Advisors, uh, she says she's tired of this negative connotation associated with affordable housing. She says there is nothing affordable anymore anywhere in San Diego. Now it was Supervisor Tara Lawson Reamer who brought this resolution forward, uh, asking her colleagues to support this idea of building 61 units at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Uh, today we learned and all of the units will be for low and extremely low income households. Now there is pressure on Del Mar to find a place to put affordable housing to satisfy state requirements, which require 113 units be built before the end of the decade. So the bottom line is the units need to go somewhere. And rather than let the state choose the location, Del Mar wants to decide. Now the city has already said no to a 259 unit project on the North Bluff called Seaside Ridge that would include affordable housing. Uh, it's currently in a legal battle with the developer of that project. Now, even with today's vote, this is not a done deal. It's possible once they take a closer look at this plan, uh, conduct some studies, it's possible this site might not be a good fit. But if this plan does move forward, these affordable units could be built by 2030. Kelly Hassett, all CBS 8. Thank you, Kelly. Leaders in the state assembly are introducing a bipartisan package to help crack down on retail theft and crime across the state. The bill includes expanded tools for police to arrest people for shoplifting. It also keeps repeat offenders and people committing organized retail crime in jail. The retail issue has become very pronounced. I think just a few weeks ago, um, it shows how emboldened folks are because we're not holding people accountable. The legislation would also add railroad police to fight cargo theft. The package includes seven measures with more expected to be added. We don't know yet when a vote will happen. 
A new pedestrian crossing signal is up and running on El Cajon Boulevard in La Mesa. It's part of the city's Vision Zero policy aimed at reducing pedestrian fatalities. As CBS 8's David Gofferson reports, the traffic lights could be a bit confusing for drivers. It's called a Hawk, high intensity activated crosswalk. A brand new traffic signal at El Cajon Boulevard and Jesse Avenue that talks to pedestrians when they push the button. Wait, El Cajon Boulevard. And here's what drivers on the road see, a cluster of three red and yellow lights. Once the pedestrian activates a signal, the lights will turn a flashing yellow, and that's telling the driver to prepare to stop, slow down. After that, it changes to two solid red lights. It turns red first, a solid red first, and that means you have to stop. By law, you have to stop for pedestrians. This next part can be a bit confusing for drivers. The lights then change from solid red to flashing red. City of La Mesa spokesperson Gracia Aguilar explains. When it starts flashing, you can proceed with caution. If there are no pedestrians crossing, you may continue to drive. If you see a pedestrian crossing, but the lights are flashing, you have to stop. It does take some getting used to, so the city installed signs telling drivers to stop if flashing red and proceed if clear. Customers and business owners in the area seem to like the new crossing. It was hard coming out of there because you had to wait for traffic and then you, it was kind of a blind spot because of the, the curve that curves into this street. A person passed away just crossing the street because people basically kind of fly down the street. So this is going to stop them and give them a little bit more of a break. There is some sticker shock. The Hawk crossing signal costs $440,000, but the city says most of that money is grant funded. So you see the car stopping behind me right now. It does take a little time to get used to the flashing lights and the three lights and what they mean, but just follow the signs and you should be okay. In La Mesa, David Goffertson, CBS 8. All right, thanks, David. San Diego County is reminding people to pay their property taxes ahead of a key deadline tomorrow. This applies to the second installment of property taxes, which came due in February. After tomorrow, a 10% penalty is applied to late payments. Right now, county residents owe more than $8.6 billion in property taxes. The best way to pay is through the Treasurer Tax Collector's website. That's sdttc.com. After more than a century, one local school is getting an upgrade. Today, students, parents, and staff gathered at Roosevelt Middle School to celebrate the renovation. Construction crews have already started work on the project. The plan includes a new student services office, upgrades to campus security, and solar panels to promote sustainability. It's set to be finished in the summer of 2026. The school opened all the way back in 1922. Hmm. Still ahead, San Diego City leaders try to figure out a way to fix failing streets. Plus, the Do Not Call registry may not protect you from all unwanted callers. We verify. Lots of sunshine in our forecast for today. We're going to see much of that all the way through Thursday, but there is a chance for rain back in the forecast by the weekend. All those details are coming up.